There we go. Hey, it's Tim Esterdahl, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and that's Tim Esterdahl. <laughs> working on the uh, feedback I'm getting from the channel. I have my new office set up behind me. I have new lighting. I have all sorts of new stuff. If you've never joined me in these live streams before, well, all these live streams where we uh, pour a little glass of whiskey here and we talk about trucks. It's a back and forth conversation with you guys. Hit me up with questions. We'll talk about stuff, uh, truck topics. It's just a good old fashioned time. So uh, with that going, I believe the uh, stuff's working well. We will see some comments happen. Uh, there, I can see my, my face going there. It's always a game of seeing what the delay is on the screen and how it's all gonna, yeah, work out. So, I posted some photos of the office. I got some new uh, stuff, uh, some new gear. I got all sorts of stuff going on. This, this, this is happening, this is fantastic. So, Ultra Frozen, first comment of the night. Thanks for the info for the Ford 7.3 liter versus GM 6.6 .6 liter. Uh, last time, keep the good info reviews coming. Yeah, absolutely. Rock on. I will keep them going. Um, somebody asked me about reviews. I have like five vehicles I need to review. I have the, the video for it. I got like 10 more scheduled. I mean, I have a lot of stuff going on. So I'm going to keep putting out content and hopefully you guys watch and you enjoy it. Um, and I'm going, like I said in a little bit in the title, I'm going to Chicago Auto Show. I have the press schedule. So we'll talk about that tonight and how tired I'm going to be. Because it's a show to my butt. Um, so yeah, I got all sorts of cool stuff. I even got a golf towel. And I got a special surprise coming on that uh, realm in the future. So keep an eye out for that. I bought something kind of, well, ridiculous. Um, and I have, like I said, I have kind of new screen set up, new hats, new all sorts of stuff going on. So I'm hoping this uh, is a lot better than the uh, blank white wall I was having before. Because that, well, even I got tired of that. I was like, that that's just crap. It just sucks. So... Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to pour a drink while you guys uh, filter in and get some questions. Holy cow, already 31 viewers? Mm -hmm. Your screen may look differently. Let's see, it's time doing a beach peach flavored whiskey from Bird Dog, 80 proof. Um, last night for the Super Bowl, which, by the way, I thought was a good game, I might have drank a bit too much. So tonight I'm just going with something that has a little sweet taste to it that's not going to not gonna kill me. I um, also had a bunch of, um, anyways, one night last night. So, uh, cheers to you. Uh, the subscriber count is going crazy. You guys are loving the channel, man. It's 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 humbling, just the response I'm getting these days. And thank you for that because it just it's fantastic. I never did think this channel would do that. I mean, I hoped, but it's just going. It's rolling like crazy. So that's awesome. Uh, questions coming in. I'm um, I'm gonna get to your questions. And then we'll talk about the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, kind of give me your thoughts on whether you think there's something to be there cool or not. And by the way, I'm, I'm merchandise, kicking stuff, like really cool Nike hat, cool shirts, uh, work shirts. I think it's badass. If you want to order them, that's cool. Hit me up, Tim at PickupTruckTalk.com. Pickup I can talk tonight. And uh, hit me up, uh, uh, what did I say, 30, 45, and whatever the towel was, 20. I'm selling these basically with shipping, and I make 5 bucks. So I'm not getting rich off you guys. But if you guys want the stuff, let me know. If you have a request, let me know. The shop in town is fantastic. They will do one-offs. They do this one-off hat, no big deal. So, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Um, I just, I'm going to rep the channel, man. I freaking love the channel. And I love what I do. It's just passion. That's something else that you can put out is passion. Passion about trucks, damn it. Can't you tell? Yeah, and uh, maybe later on, if you guys want, uh, put me in the comments. I can take a walk around the new office and kind of show you what's going on and what I have uh, going on behind me. You want to close up with that kind of stuff. Um, some funny stuff, some funny stories, cool stuff. Hey, Brandon is calling in from San Francisco. I guess not calling in, I guess you're typing in. But anyways, Brandon, uh, I hope you had a good time last night until the fourth quarter. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, I thought it was a good game, though. I thought it was a really good game, closer to the end. Uh, what do you make of the rumors that the 3.0 liter power stroke is dead for 2020? Uh, I, I, I have not heard that rumor. But it would make sense to me. It's an it's a power plant Ford isn't talking about. It's a power plant they're not even dis, they're not even uh, showing off at like auto shows. I don't see that power show that very often. I drove it once or drove it twice. Excuse me. In two years, it's been out two three years. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a good seller. And what's interesting with Ford is Ford has spent so much energy to get the EcoBoost to be such a big seller 
that it would make sense that a diesel would be a big seller. They, they pour so many millions of dollars in this EcoBoost that I have a hard, hard time seeing them sell an additional power plant. And the, the, the fact is that one of the things that Ford was trying to do with new guy, the furniture guy, New CEO. Anyways, he was trying to cut down the variations because they offer so, so many different trims and so many different configurations. You can, you can custom order any sort of Ford you want, which is really cool for the consumer and really bad for business. Imagine if I had 47 hats of different colors and such. I'd have a hard time making a profit. And so they have, what, six powertrains and the F-150? Let's see. 3.3 um, liter, 2.7 liter, 3.5 liter, the 3.0 diesel, and the 5 liter V8. Five, five different configurations. Maybe we're forgetting one. Yeah, five. And so that's a lot of different variations of engines. And frankly, I think they need to cut back on the variety, which should improve profit, which should improve the stock price. His name is Jim. Jim. Uh, I can't use my computer to search my because my uh, my laptop, which is celebrating five years of being a good Apple product for me, um, is just well. I didn't plan to do a video. I didn't buy it right. <laughs> so it's, it's holding on. Uh, Dill, love the channel. Thanks for hard work. Hey, thanks for, thanks for watching, man. You guys make this happen. It's you that make this happen. Uh, how do you like the new Titan XD? I didn't get a chance to drive it last week. Uh, Nissan wasn't friendly with me to get an invite. But all it's got is 9-speed versus 7-speed, and I, that's going to impact highway speed. So offline towing shouldn't be any different. And uh, I think the improvements they made were smart improvements. I think the moonroof, the front grill, difference between that and different different models, which I remember talking to Tiago Castro, who was the head of marketing over there, and I was like, dude, you got to do something. Because the first, when they first came out of those in 17, 16, every Nissan Titan, Platinum Reserve through SSL all looked the same. And I was like, this has got to stop. You have got to make these trims look different. You'll never see a King Ranch have the same trim level as the STX I did, the, the XL... T STX trim I did. Um, that that truck looks different when you get to the King Ranch, and Nissan really blew it there, and they really made a big improvement there. The bigger screen is nice. I'm making a video on this tomorrow. I hope uh, I was trying to get to it today and just got caught up with stuff. But uh, I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think of this? Five thousand dollars more on some configurations of the 2020 Nissan Titan over the 2019 Nissan Titan. They added moonroof. Radio, front, front grill. They killed the regular cab and got rid of the Cummins. Five grand. That's gonna be tough. Your wife says the same when she was me <laughs> right. Um, she just you don't know my wife. She doesn't know that. Um, what is happening with the Nissan Frontier? There's no 2020 Frontier for sale. Has the production been discontinued until the new 2021? Hey Johnny Five. Um, so I am my friend David Boyd over at Nissan Nation Podcast. He has a YouTube channel he's trying to grow. He's got some stuff going on. He's very close to Nissan. Him and I have been trading uh, DMs on Facebook for a long time, or PMs. He's whatever you call those things. Anyways, uh, the story is they will have an announcement in Chicago in a couple days, and or they may not announce it. It's been back and forth Nissan. Frankly, they can't decide. And uh, it sounds like it's going to go on sale in August. So it sounds like it's going to be midsummer reveal, and it goes immediately on sale, which is what they did with the Titan. The 2020 Titan went on sale, what got shown in October, went on sale like December. So I, I think they're going to do the same thing. I think you're going to see a midsummer, weird timing Nissan Frontier announcement, and then goes on sale in 2021. Because uh, Nissan's got to do something. They're, they're, they plan on replacing like 70% of their lineup. Because frankly, a lot of it sucks. It just does. Um, Johnny Five is here. Juan, any Rebel TRX debut? No information, nothing in Chicago. I think Ram's going to do that off-site, or they'll do it in Detroit. I think Detroit makes a lot of sense. Um, if Ram does an auto show, it's Detroit for their trucks. Chicago, they really don't do much in Chicago. Wow, there's a lot going on. Uh, fun build trucks, yeah. What about the delivery in Russia? And try reading my last name. <sighs> it's Le Lebedev? Lebedev. Lebedev? So I've had this ongoing thing. I did. I actually did a poll on this, whether I talk too fast, whether my words are jumbled, and it's a Midwest accent, I've decided, is what it is. And that's my uh, story. I'm sticking to it. So there you go. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try that one, Tim. I'm going to try it. When you call your Russia, Tim. 
Uh, I don't know much about what this is. So interesting you're on here from Russia again, because I don't know much about the marketplace. I know you. Uh, I know in the. Would you guys call it the eastern part of Russia? You know where the the big open spaces are. I think you'd call it the eastern. Anyways, um, that is much like the outback in Australia. Big wide open spaces. It makes sense for a truck to go in that marketplace. It would. I, I just don't know. Terrible fourth quarter. Yeah, Brandon's sucking it up. Uh, Timbo. Elliot's here. Mark's here. Brandon's here. Man, all this sorts of stuff. Uh, yeah, cheers, Tyler. Uh, no new uh, round TRX news. I did, I did skip running the spy photos of that. I also got spy photos today. Let me know. If, let me comment. Let me know if you want to know this. I got spy photos today of the Hyundai Hyundai Santa Cruz pickup testing in the cold in Korea. It's all badged up. And I here's the thing: they're 150 bucks for these stick, for these spy photos. I, well, I said it out loud. Okay, so ignore that comment. They're a couple hundred dollars for these. <laughs> they're expensive. Damn it! And I got to make sure my return on investment is high on these. And I just don't see much return on investment in a heavily clad TRX or a heavily clad Hyundai Santa Cruz. I just, I'm having trouble with buying these spy photos. It seems like a lot of money. I'm not getting my money back. Uh, Elliot, and two power output levels of the three, three power. Yeah, exactly. They have the high output for the Raptor and not. So that's like six different power trains. New channel, click subscribe, click nut. Yep, absolutely. Um, Johnny5 doing a good job. Any predictions what the Hummer looked like? Electric Sierra or Cybertruck competitor? I think Electric Sierra, I think it's going to have basically the same as that. that. Um, I did finally figure it out in my head. I finally made sense of that truck in my head. In my head, the Hummer EV is going to be a sport truck. Because the 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, 1,000 foot, a thousand horsepower, and basically it was going to be out to be about 1,000 foot-pounds of torque because the 11,000 number is ridiculous. So it's going to be a sports truck. You'll be able to drive it a couple hundred miles. Full, up, full blast, and you're not going to really be able to tow much, haul much with that because they didn't announce it at all because they know what the deal is. And it's going to be a sport truck. And I'm fine with that as long as we all decide that's what it's going to be. Like, the cyber truck is not a real truck. It's a sports truck. That's fine. I have no argument there. My friends used to have sport trucks back in the day. They loved it. No problem. But let's not call these things trucks. Call them sport trucks. There. Get off my soapbox. Um, bum, bum. There, speaking of Nissan Nation Podcast, there is David Boyd. We were just talking about it a little bit earlier. Wants to be back. Do they pack five thousand dollars with upgrades? No. David and I, David and I are gonna have some conversations about this uh, pricing. This pricing on the Nissan Titan. That's kind of crazy. Uh, I'm guessing Brandon a very new Yukon Sierra. Yeah, I think so. Right now, yeah. Interior like the Yukon. Um, look at the design like the Sierra. I think you guys are right. 5000 more for a truck than whatever I wanted. Ridiculous. I, uh, some configurations are a few hundred dollars, but some of the crew cap configurations are the five grand more. No Nissan Frontier. So they're talking Frontier. Automakers don't care about the present. They want cars. So part of it as a higher price is called for higher incentives. Agreed. 2020 getting a model refresh. Motor and tried to the same old body for six months. Huh. That's what David and I have been talking about. See that? David and I have been talking about the Frontier quite a bit. You're right in the Midwest accent. Thank you, Mr. Mister. I think that's what I decided. It is hot in here. I have all these lights on. This is crazy how lit up it is in here. Um, do you think the 5,000 bump of the Titan is because of all standard features? That's the thing. I need to research it. I need to really research what the deal is because, yeah, I think I think part of it is the drop of regular cab. So if you drop regular cab, your price goes up a little bit as well. Um, some of the more standard features, sure, they'll raise the price up. But 5K is a lot. 5K for a truck that wasn't selling that much at all. Um, I need to do some more research. It's on my list. It's a video I'm working on. Like I said I was going to do it this weekend. I got busy doing this. Do it today. Just didn't get it. Just didn't get it done. Sorry, guys. Did not get that done. But I'm going to re research and see what the deal is. First, to get the same upgrade to play sales for less than five grand. That's a good question. Loud and clear from Alberta, Canada. <laughs> Alberta. Alberta. Wow, I'm. I told. I had a late night, guys. Sorry. Um, yeah, Alberta, Canada. Good day. Howdy, howdy, good day. Yeah. Uh, Michigan have the same issues. Speaking clearly. I actually was uh, graduate high school in Brandon, Michigan, or Brandon High School in Michigan, in Ortonville. So apparently, I have a Midwest accent. Nice head. Hey. Yeah. Check it out. Um, I I don't do this well. I I suck at promotions. But I got 
I got hats. I got like the Dicky shirts or the red, the red something shirt. And uh, I got a golf towel. I'm, I, I'm to tease you that I got something more ridiculous than the golf towel coming. But so you can buy them. I, I would sell them. Um, I think it's thirty bucks for the hat. And it's a Nike hat. It's really nice, form fitting. I need a new hat for golf, and it really fits well. I'm really excited about this hat. So if you guys uh, want that stuff, hit me up. If you want th this town, this thing in town, man, this embroidery shop is fantastic. They do like one-off stuff. They did this hat for me, one-off. It's awesome. And at 30 bucks, it's going to be, um, I make five bucks and I, and I pay five bucks for shipping. So there you go. Um, you buy me a Whopper, I guess is the deal. Uh, I found another million mile Duramax, did you? Chevy Trucks Legends Facebook. Oh, there's, they have a Facebook page? I went to the website and the website is hard as hell to search. Chevy Trucks Facebook. So I'll have an interview on Thursday with the million mile Nissan Frontier guy. He put a bunch of city miles in his truck. So it'll be interesting to see what that's going to do. Juan's been so busy catching up videos. I have a lot of stuff going in there. Uh, Tundra Guy 19. Tim, what kind of what type of truck do you drive? It's always a good question. So for a year, for a while, I had a Tundra. I've owned a Chevy S10. My family owns GM products. Um, Right now, I have a 62 Chevy C10 Swede. If you look up uh, Chevy underscore Swede, he is on uh, Instagram. And the reason why I have Swede is because I have like 100 press cars a year, which means they bring them to my house, drop them off, they pick them up, and seven days later, and take them back to Denver and they swap out. So I had a Tundra, and I was making payments on it because I used to run Tundra headquarters. So I thought, I better buy the truck I'm writing about because that just, why would, it's like, it's like doing this job, and let's say I drove a Honda Ridgeline. No offense, Honda Ridgeline, but... Really? Yeah, that's not going to happen. So I bought the truck when I did the channel, when I did the outlet. When I stopped doing the outlet, I was sitting around looking at this truck going, why am I making all these payments on it when I'm just dri not driving it? I was literally sitting on the side of the house for like a month. And so I sold it. And so I don't currently own anything. My wife owns a Mazda CX-5. We just we just leased for her. And my plan is to, every three years, swap thing out for her. Uh, she's just a big fan of the powertrain, the CX-5, the non-turbo version. And they have a lot of value. And so she got that. So... Um, but I would I would drive them all. I, I really hope, knock on wood, is that this channel gets big enough and I will just go get a fleet of trucks. I will go lease a fleet of trucks and all I would do is truck videos and different ones. That'd be my that'd be my plan because I love them all. They're all they're all there's something good about all of them and they all make good products these days and there's something you could talk about all these trucks. And it's just an exceptional time to be a consumer in the marketplace. So there's your answer. Five photos new Kia Sorento, I did. I, Again, it's not that big of a deal. I just have a hard time buying these photos when I don't see much. There's not much there, and I haven't made a lot of spy photos, to be honest with you. Full disclosure, spy photo videos are really more misses than hits, and so i am kind of been debating what I'm going to buy, uh, what kind of photos I'm going to buy. Queer for cars. William's here. William, most of the EVs are going to be sport trucks, not work trucks. Again, William and I agree. Um, I think that's what's going to be. I think the Hummer's coming back because a lot of people hate it. I have a friend in Texas has a Hummer, blinged out, will not take it off-road. It drives me up a wall. And I'm like, dude, come on. You know, but he won't do it. Texas great for sure. Have we heard who the first electric sport truck in the market? Rivian Tesla, Ford, or Hummer. Well, I think it's all going to be next year. I think it's going to be a race to become first. It's going to be a doomsday race. I, I just don't, I don't know. I, it, I. I, I don't know how big that market is. That's my biggest concern. How big is that market? Because the sport truck market wasn't very big, and they killed that market. Well, Cafe also kind of hurt it, too. But um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be first. I think Rivian's doing smart teaming up with Lincoln to build a co-produced SUV. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think GM's doing it smart because they're going to be able to offset some of the production with other vehicles in that plant. I'm really concerned with Tesla because, well, I, the Cybertruck is so bizarre. I don't know. I mean, I think they're all going to sell, and then I'll be like a question mark how long they're going to sell beyond that. That's going to be the question. Beat up Nissan in Chicago about pricing. Yeah. I, I find this, David, you don't beat them up in person. <laughs> you listen to what they can say, you listen to arguments, and you go back and then you beat them up in the video. Uh, do you think Chevrolet will eventually have a Hummer EV variation exclusively GMC? I think it'll be exclusively GMC for the first decade because you have to remember with GMC, GMC's got a higher. Average transaction price that Chevrolet has, which can allow them to absorb some of the cost of developing that EV truck, and that's why they're going GMC. 
and I think it's going to be a while until they pay off the R&D and get battery prices down low enough and then figure out demand before they can launch that truck into a Chevrolet. But I don't see it going Chevrolet for quite a while. The price XD is too much for half and not enough for three quarter. I agree. If there's 5K hype across the board, it'll be a flop. Yeah. Tim, you grew up in the sticks. Do you tell people you grew up near Detroit to sound cool? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ort Ortonville, we lived on a dirt road. I lived on a dirt road. We had more uh, mud days than we did snow days growing up because the mud would get so deep in the dirt roads, they couldn't send the buses down. So... But I was born in Wisconsin, lived in Indiana, lived in Michigan, lived in Colorado, lived in Nebraska. So I've been all over the place. Uh, yeah, David says, share this feed as well. Social, so to love. Hey, I'm trying. Thanks for that. 45 people tonight. I That blows my mind. Um, do you think GM will change to a 10 speed for the 6.6 gas HD for 2021? No, it's too soon. Uh, so... Typically, it's seven years for most trucks. Do seven in this case, and seven years full redesign, and three and a half years they used to do a powertrain redesign. And so I think it's going to be the 2020s are new, so it'd be 2023, 2024, something in that range. I think the interior will be upgraded before then. But I just saw some news the other day that GM just signed an agreement with UAW to have mandatory Sundays through the next through this first quarter, which means. I'm sorry, I got friends working at a facility in Flint. Man, that's seven days nonstop. They work to go to work every damn day. And I don't know how they're going to do that because they're going to burn the workforce out because they say demand is so high for the heavy duties. I've seen three heavy duties in town have sold. And I got to tell you what, white is a terrible color on that heavy duty. Give me the red, give me the blue, give me something that hides the look a little bit. Uh, no clues. I heard they're closing the Canton, Mississippi Nissan plant. No, I don't think they're going to close it. I think their Nissan's contracting, but I don't think they're going to close that plant. They don't have that many plants in the United States. And with the chicken tax on truck sales, I think they have to keep building. What are your thoughts on USMCA bringing more manufacturing to the United States? Mike Tundra asked. USMCA. You don't mean the offense to bridge line. Right. Uh, USMCA. USM, US. I feel like I should know this one. Oh, the oh, that's the new. Um, uh, that's that they replaced. Oh, what was that thing? The NAFTA. They replaced NAFTA. Yeah, I. You know, I mean, that was that was the case. What NAFTA was supposed to be, and then NAFTA became. They could build trucks in Mexico for the same for cheaper than they could in the United States. So, the the problem with NAFTA and USMCA agreements is that. You sign it today, but it's a decade until it takes effect, really, until things change. Now, will manufacturers offer more production in the United States because of trade deals? Well, sure. Where would you rather build your vehicles? Where they sell them or where they where you don't sell them? Well, yeah, you want to build them where you sell them. But you know what's always hurt the United States is we have a higher cost of labor. And so labor costs are always factored into that. So I, I don't... I look more closely at the details of that before I could really sound off on that. But I mean, what other manufacturing could they have, right? So, what else do you want to build in the United States that's not built here? So let's look at um, let's look at Chevrolet. The Blazers built in Mexico. They could shift it here, but the Blazer doesn't build that much. I mean, there's not that many Blazers sold, so I don't know how you're going to devote a plant to that. Uh, the Silverados are built here. The heavy Duty are still built in Salau, but they built built in Salau for a long time, and so I don't. They could shift them back to the United States, I guess, but hasn't really impacted their sales in the heavy duties, and they still built some in Flint too. So I think the was it the regular cabs were built in Salau, or the crew cabs were built in Salau, and the other ones were built in Flint, something like that. And so they built they built in both places. Uh, Ford builds all their vehicles in the United States, all their trucks. Um, so I guess the Ranger, well, the Ranger built I think in the United States. Toyota, um, Toyota builds a Tundra in, in, in Texas. They built a Tacoma still in Texas, but they're going to move it to, to uh, Mexico. And the reason they moved to Mexico was they screwed up. They built that plant for the Corolla, and then sales dived off. And so now they got to build something there to occupy the plant. Um, I think Honda builds their stuff in Ohio, or their R&Ds in Ohio. Nissan builds North America. Uh, Ram builds, I think their crew cabs are still built in Mexico, but then they still build their, their other trucks in the United States. So 
Um, and Toda builds the Highlander and, and Sequoia. The Sequoia's going to move to San Antonio, but they build the Highlander and the RAV4 in Indiana. So I... I'm just, I don't know. Uh, U.S. manufacturing has been on a high of, as of late as far as number of plants in the United States. The problem is, is that robots take the place of employees, and so labor hasn't been as high as it always been. But there's lots of stuff, stuff built in the United States. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be, but again, it's, you're looking at a five, ten year deal before something actually happens. And so, and you're changing the culture of future product planning. That's a lot, a lot of work. Um, I think GM exclusive. Da, 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 da. You better take that. But yeah, trucks and employees garages instead. Only need to build a few trucks here. I think they would be a perfect decision. But yeah, say I won't buy a new diesel if they can't tune it. Maybe electric's way to go. Hummer has me intrigued. So yeah, I mean Leroy, if you're into tuning stuff and you're into fast trucks, I think that electric's the way you want to be. I think it's a sport truck and I think it's going to be very fast. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I have a BMW X3 M competition outside that I've been driving. Uh, and it goes 0 to 60 in 4 seconds. I've done that twice. And I've had it for a week. Because we're not driving. It, it, all the speed limit around me are 45, 45, 25. And there's traffic. Like, I, I don't. That's my problem with, with fast trucks is that where do you drive it at? Because 0 to 60 in 3 seconds means, okay, 3 seconds I'm at speed limit. And I don't like tickets anymore, so yeah, that's one of those things. <sighs> Never heard anything back from GM parts and carbon, by, carbon bed. Temp. I haven't heard anything either, Brandon. I haven't heard anything. I need somebody, somebody on this on this live stream somewhere else. If you were a GMC dealer employee, if you run the parts counter, I need a, a phone screenshot of the parts on the GMC carbon bed, replacement carbon bed. I want to know what the price is. I'm dying to know the price. Like Juan's dying to see the new Bronco. I got to tell you what, Juan, I am so bored with the Bronco. I'm so done with it. It's like, just release the damn thing already. I'm so over that moon on that that vehicle. It's like, I'm, I'm tired of the teasers. I'm tired of the, the spy photos. Just bring it out. Uh, Driver truck in the mud sounds like fun. <laughs> the new Hummer looked like an avalanche. Hmm. I'm going to say yes to that. I could see that being the way to go. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. I've never agreed why they haven't brought back the Avalanche. Never, never understood that because that thing, especially in today's truck market, could sell really well. I've done videos on this channel about bringing back the Avalanche. So I, I could see that. Uh, we're used to live. Yeah, no. We did a lot of stuff with trucks back in the day, but uh, getting stuck in the mud was not something we wanted to do. Why well, success six of the old six-speed auto in the heavy-duty? Probably for the torque curve and what it provided. I mean, just because you add more speeds doesn't mean you get better driving. You know, it doesn't always work out that way. Look at the Titan. It went from a 7-speed to 9-speed. They only improved the the gearing from 50 to 75. So it's not much difference there. Not sure you should wear it more often. I just got them today. I just got them today from the uh, embroidery. I just got it. And so I'm excited because when I go to Chicago, I'm wearing them all. And it, it's one of those shirts you don't tuck in. <laughs> So you can keep your fat jokes elsewhere. I had somebody, and this this kind of pissed me off. Somebody actually said to me, they said, uh, when you do your, your backdrop for this thing, you got to put a treadmill back here. I was like, God, night, guys. I'm in the Y, at the YMCA. I go to Y. I'm there three, four times a week. Uh, last, two weekends ago, I walked 18 on Saturday and 18 on Sunday. I walked 11 holes yesterday. I'm trying. I'm trying. Gates is the only where they currently build Titan Frontier NV vans or Flow Ultima. Yeah, I was thinking that they had a lot going on down there. I've seen no GM heavy duty trucks here in Detroit. All I see are Ram 1500s, Silverados, F 150s, a bunch of big cars. New Escape and Explorers are popping up. I see a bunch of Eco Sports for some reason. I've seen some in Detroit. I've seen some outside of Detroit. And Smyrna. Why is the Ranger built in unit? It's identical to the international version to appease the Ford fans. 2, 3, and 10 speed only American. Here's the media preview. Oh, Juan's got it. I have it right here, Juan. Okay. All right. Here, oh, here we go. Um, so let's talk about this. I'm going to get to your comments. I'm sorry. I'm taking time out right now. So Chicago Auto Show, I fly out 6 a.m. Wednesday morning. I land at like 1 o'clock uh, in Chicago. I'm going to the Ford News Press 
news conference reception at 4.30 to 6.30. I'm then going to Nissan news conference reception at 6 to 8. I'm then going to Toyota news conference from 8 to 11.30. Actually not. I'm going until 9 o'clock. Ed Locks, Locks is the um, speaker. He gives remarks at 9 o'clock. I'm going to bed. Thursday morning at 7.30 at, to 8 with the has the Mama Breakfast. I'll be there. Then Chrysler News Conference, 9.30. Hyundai at 9.30, or 9 o'clock Chrysler. 9.30 Hyundai. 10 o'clock Honda. 10.30 Toyota. And there's a secret um, round table after the Toyota News Conference. Volkswagen's at 11. Ford's at 11.30. Uh, lunch at the Economic Club, which I always tend to skip because I don't hate economic news. Uh, Jaguar is at 1. Uh, Jeep's at 2. 2.30 Motor Week, Driver's Choice Awards. I think it's all blah. Genesis and Apple Romero. And then uh, Thursday night, I'm going to Ditka's for dinner with steaks with, with Toyota. And then Sweet Home Chicago, which is an after party until like 1 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Friday, uh, Mopar Breakfast, National Advertisers, Driving Influence, Breakfast and Award, uh, Ford, Alpha, Chrysler, Acura, Kia, Nissan, Stack Break, Total Wax, Detailer Demos, Volkswagen, What Drives Her, and Hyundai Dessert Reception. I will not beat anything on Friday because I am going home. I am. I got a like a ten o'clock flight. I am at the airport and flying home because I'm gonna be tired, guys. I'm gonna be up late. Thursday is gonna be a marathon day. I might have to join my buddy David Boyd by having a Monster Energy in the afternoon to keep my ass going because I'll be one tired cookie. Now, as far as reveals, uh, I already got the embargo information for Toyota. Sorry, I can't share it. Um, it's interesting. It, it's. I'm not as disappointed as I, what I once was, but I'm not as excited as I was either. So keep that in mind. Uh, Nissan News Conference. I don't think much can be there. Dave and I have been talking about that. I'm not sure much is going to be there. Some news. Uh, Ford News Conference and Reception. I don't think Bronco is going to be there. I really don't think they're going to do it there. I think they're just going to talk about... I don't know what they're going to talk about. Oh, they're going to talk about Le Mans. Uh, uh, how do you get the news release on this? Le Mans or something. They're doing something with their GT. It's not truck news. Uh, Chrysler is going to do... I don't know. I don't see Chrysler, Honda, and Honda doing anything um, crazy. And Ford is a vehicle walk around, so that's nothing there. And Jeep news conference. Eh, I don't. I mean, it's just new conference. I don't see much reveals. I think uh, Jeep Prescott done three row Grand Cherokee, regular Grand Cherokee. I think the Grand Cherokee is going to be done in Detroit. I think a lot of automakers are doing something in Detroit this year. How much do you love the X3 Comp without reading a review? It is a fantastic to drive SUV. It's quick. It's awesome. It sounds good. Something my EV friends kind of bug me about is that it sounds really good. On driving it, it's great. On smoothly paved roads, it is awful. Awful if the road's not paved. It is just horrendous. And it's horrendous anywhere if you have a perfectly smooth road. I actually watched the road show's um, review on it. And it was funny because I was getting ready to do mine. I watched his. I still have to do some video on it. And I completely agreed. It is an SUV looking for a home. It's a really weird combination. So, yeah. Bronco will be a flopped over hype. I can Could debut. It sounds like the best gas HD right now is hands down the new 7.3 from Ford. I agree. That 7.3 is really good. I was really surprised by it. Um, I, I don't know if best because the 6.6 from GM is pretty damn good too. The 7.3, what's nice about it is that there's no there's, uh, repairability is really high. I mean, it, there's not many moving parts to it. It's a straight, non-direct injection, no turboed, ready-to-go engine. And it's the 6.6 6 has better fuel economy by like one or two mile per gallon. It's not that much at all. And so, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big leader. Oh. I need to fix that. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Uh, this is my Texas Auto Writers Association uh, Excellence in Craft, Craft Award. That um, it, it actually requires more than one nail. I didn't know this till this right now, and so um, yeah, it requires another nail. Uh, the uh, the video on my screen is delayed, and I can't wait to see my reaction when this thing falls off. I may have to wait for it. I'm keeping eye, I'm keeping eye on the screen because I know it's gonna fall. There it goes. Oh, geez, hit the monitor too. Wow, my new monitor. Boy, it made a big thing. All right. That's what happens when you uh, got to work out the office. Uh, what's your best price in Gladiator Eco Diesel? Sixty-eight thousand, probably. I, I I really wonder if the Eco Diesel, uh, the Gladiator is a flop at this point. Tim, the Hummer will compete with the Bronco, right? Nope. 
they're different vehicles, Juan. Yeah, and the Bronco won't have a V8, which will piss off the enthusiast. I think I think the, the biggest story from Bronco is going to be how pissed off people are going to be. I think that's going to be the biggest story. How disappointed and pissed off people are going to be when the Bronco comes out. That's that's my takeaway. But those assholes, you'll be happy with yourself. I know. I was kind of like, yeah. as I read that, I was like, man, I've been doing my work my ass off. I, I've been trying. I want to have a big summer. I want to golf a lot. I want to bike ride. I want to run. I want to do stuff. I want to have a big summer. But yeah, that guy was, come on. Yeah, Dad Bob. Dad Bob. Dad Bob, Dad Bod, Dad Bod, Dad Bod, Dad Bod. Dad Bod. All right, there you go. Like Hummer was a rush job. Uh, 2.3 liter V6 would be a better option. V8 does not fit in the Bronco yet. Hey, David, give me three bucks. Thanks, buddy. So you don't want to go to Oscar's Nest Blade. Side note, wire cards being debuted in the vet. That's nothing to the cars. And I know GM doesn't do auto shows anymore and kyle gave me five bucks man thank you so much that's really cool uh, you don't have to do that i really do appreciate it, though it'll go on my whiskey fund because um it gets low from time to time all right elliot i was told i couldn't go to the oscars i was uh reached out to them and they said they were full and that they had all the covers they wanted so i said okay fine and then i looked at myself and i thought i wear blue jeans and this work shirt and i wear a hat am i really oscars material yeah, I think not. <laughs> so I'm going to wait until I see it in person. I'm going to wait until I do the drive event, whatever they, they can send it to me. I didn't like the last Escalade. I didn't care for it very much, so I'll be curious to see what I think of this new one. All right. Um, and it's a weird weird combo, I agree, but that's GM these days, trying to get the weird stuff. I look at the press conference a few days before the show to get an idea what brand will be there. Oh, I look. I printed it off today, Juan. I printed it off today. Monday was the first day I could see it coming out. Battle of last week. I didn't see it last week, so I looked. I looked too. If there's any surprises, and I don't see a lot of surprises. Uh, yeah, I don't think Hummer was was a rush job at all. I think they're really planning that out, but I just don't think that they. I, I just have concerns on how big the marketplace is. I just don't. I have concerns. Uh, or the escalated opinions on the new Genesis G780. I saw some photos of it. Somebody said it looked like an Acura. Somebody else looked at some stuff. I. I just, I don't know. There's so many SUVs in that segment. I thought that maybe Genesis should do something unique, and I didn't see it very much unique. And so it was kind of a big blah to me. You know, there's so much going on in that space. I just, eh, it's kind of blah. I didn't think much of it. New pink color. Lucky to have a 7 p.m. flight Friday. Oh, yeah. No, I'm out of there. No, it's more 2.3. Bronco Raptor. You guys are way beyond. We're just trying to see the Bronco first. My uh, people before I go, unless they're worth hundred thousand, ten thousand. Oh, Jeez, I do. Oh, I do not know Tim about Russian vehicles. You should educate me. You should blow up my email and blow up whatever you want to blow up. But send me stuff from Russia. I would love to see Russian trucks at work. Send them to me. Tim at pickuptrucktalk.com. Find me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever the hell you want to be. I'm. I don't do Snapchat. But I do them all beyond that. But yeah, send them to me. I'm really curious what's going on with Russia. I really. It's it's interesting. SUV, nah, my dream SUV is G60 cost. Oh, it's a build quality of Cybertruck window. <laughs> oh, I I know it was fine, but apparently I hit my I don't know. That was funny. Live, what happens live on YouTube? Money well spent. Gladius flopped forty thousand sales last year, and it's still sales from manger. I think so. You are Oscars ready? To, yeah, do not do your loss. Yeah, I don't know. I just was kind of laughing about it. Price stuff on the market from Dave's real. Will Hummer EV be 100K? No, I think it's going to be about 80,000. 70,000, 80,000. I am too. I think we saw some. I'm sorry. I'm replying to Kyle. He said about the interior of the new Escalade. I am really curious too on what that's going to look like. I think there's a. Um, I've seen some five photos of it. The push button transmission. I'm always not a big fan of that. But I, I think I've I think we're, at this point we're going to see a big screen and some interior. I just don't know. It could be uh, it could be really cool. Or it could be lipstick on a pig. Could be. Yeah, the O L O L E D screen, that big screen, um, which I always think is funny because it's like that's the last thing I want. It's a big ass screen that distracts me from driving. And then what's the repair cost? A big L O L E D screen. That's been crazy. Yeah, it's got the, it's a huge screen in that thing. It's it's crazy. Okay, I've caught with the comments. Um, let me show you guys the new office. I made the stand up for this. So, reason it's hot in here was I uh, 
I uh, was adding lights, and so I found my shop lights to add more lights. And uh, boy, that thing is bright. And whoo, <sighs> getting bright. But I added uh, some. Uh, let's see. I don't even you can see them. I added some track lighting for that. Um, uh, back here, my friend and I have an inside joke about the Chatter Barge in uh, Wilmington, California. It's a funny story. When it's time to get, I'll tell you the story. This is a cup I had made that I hope you guys can see it. Nebraska, the top Nebraska All Journalists of the Year for uh, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. And I had a cousin of mine. He says, "Well, what if somebody else is better than you? What if somebody else like won the award that year? What if you didn't win it?" And I looked at him. And I said, "It's my damn award. I can give it to who I want to, and I'm giving it to me." So, top journalist of Nebraska, right here. Um, this was interesting. This is a peel and stick wallpaper. And so I actually did the whole wall. I did it all the way across. And uh, it turned out pretty well. It, it's got a few, um, doesn't quite work in a few spots, but it's um, such a different texture that you can't really tell my mistakes. Um, the Sierra Debut, the two ne Nissan Titan, uh, what are we calling those? Heads, cylinder heads. I have an old, light, like a flame lantern. I think it's an old welder. I think you put gas in it, light it up, and that's how you uh, light and stuff. Got some cool books. I have this that those who have done much around the old farms would realize what this is. It is for, uh, yeah. Oh, so I'm getting an error because I can't maintain my smooth screening. So I'm trying to keep both hands on the camera. I have an old jack back there I found in my Swede, my pickup. Some stories I have from, motor tra from uh, Truck Trend. My first story in the Boston uh, Globe up there, my degree, and my hat collection, which is uh, growing, and then my monitor. So, yeah. So if I look like I'm sweating set this down. So, if it looks like I'm sweating, that's because I'm really getting hot with this. Right, I'm gonna, I need to buy, there's a box light I can hang right over there that does the same thing, softer light, so it's not so, uh, yeah, not so bright. So, oh, I lost my plug. Hold on, let me turn it on. All right, sorry about that. I, uh, I'm gonna, I, I have a setup for a new uh, camera. I wanna do an external camera with this system and be able to just respond to comments here and have my cell phone be the camera. So I have to figure that out. Don't touch any fault around. The connection is terrible. Yeah, so I, there it is. So there, I'm sorry for the uh, shakiness of the display, but we're back now. So it should be going back any second now. All right, now we're back. Now I'm sitting still and it's fine. I, I'm connect, direct connected into the laptop, so I got some technology issues. I'm sorry. I read next from Nebraska. Let me figure this shit out. Um, way more truck than Gladiator. I agree. Does GM have any re eBay rebate stuff for the Hummer? No. Nope. He will max out. So 80,000, no rebates. And the, the EV did not build and not get passed. That means there's no rebates. Uh, I like that wall. Yeah, it was. It took me two days to get that wall done. Whew, that was a lot of work. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm back here. I'm touch anything in front of Nebraska. Oh, I'm on the, uh, I'm in Gearing, Scottsdale area, very western side. So that's like 20 minutes to Wyoming, and that's like eight hours to Lincoln. That's how it works out. Well, it's legit. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks really good on camera, too. It, and I'm really excited about that. Let me put, turn back so you can see my my cool logo on my other screen. I had to, my wife had to help me with that one. She was really proud of herself for helping me figure out technology issues. Oh, uh, so Jet, yeah, but this label will have a bigger screen because if it didn't, journalists would wind up. Oh, stop. <laughs> size, <laughs> screen size queens. Elliot has a uh, certain uh, love affair with my colleagues. <laughs> yeah, large screen trending. Um, it looks like one bias. Yeah, it does look. It does look really good. It, it, and again, it's a, it's a peel and stick. I have it actually some leftover over here. You guys want to see it closer? It's a peel and stick wallpaper that worked really well and really uh, forgivable too. Uh, do you have rebates? No, I don't. Leroy, I think they're running out. I think they're running out because of you hit the max limit because of all the uh, bolts they've sold, and I think they're running out of EB credits. I think them and Tesla are running out of credits. These have a minimum 500 horsepower. Look at that Mach-E. Yep. 
What if GM and Ford only wanted an EV truck for the carbon credits? They Ford would because they could still sell those carbon credits. That's the thing that was interesting with Tesla was the majority of their business was selling carbon credits. And so people are really wondering what's going to happen when Tesla runs out of carbon credits to sell. Hmm. Yeah, 79 so. Can you prevent the manufacturer to Chicago with lack of eight rear AC vets? I will make that a plan. But the peer reps don't have any answer to that. One continuous large screen from gauge cluster center console. Look, it looks sweet, but I just wonder about repairability. Like, it's how it's going to work. Millard Gretna. Hmm. I, you know, no updates on the uh, the TRX. Nothing that I've seen beyond the um, spy photos. I think it's going to be in Michigan. It's going to be what you think it is, guys. It's going to be a Ram with the Hellcat engine, a little bit bigger lift. It's going to have some interior badging that say uh, TRX on it. It's going to have uh, some more accessories that say TRX on it. It's, that's going to be what it's going to be. The TFL win lottery or something? Pick a truck. What's with all new trucks? Oh, he's got to he's he's got to buy him for tax problems. I think that's that's what I hear is that he's uh. And it's kind of smart. I thought about doing the same thing. It's like you can get these trucks and um, you get the trucks and then you can write off the lease. So why wouldn't you buy trucks all the time? Mm -hmm. So I wish that's what I'm going to do. I wish I could uh, do that. I wish I could do, um, well, it's near Omaha. Oh, I see. I, I want to buy a truck for the same reason. I want to buy a truck so I can have tax write-offs. I'm going to lease it for six months, lift it, tires, all that kind of stuff, do a bunch of videos on it, and then sell it. Because that's the way you, that's how business works. Tesla doesn't have my rebates, yeah. Brandon, I'm predicting things falling off the wall. I know! I, I I guess I need a screw. I didn't realize how heavy this thing was, but apparently it's pretty heavy. Um, Hellcat Durango on the way. It is. It is on the way. I saw some five photos. They're talking about New York, so that's going to be... New York Auto Show will be in April. I do not go to that show because it's New York City and it is... It drives me up a wall. Uh, Tricky things. Uh, hi, one Tucson checking in. Hey, Tucson. I was in Phoenix a couple weeks ago. Makes sense. Demon Gladiator. Yeah, 780, 780. Hellcat Wagoneer. I think it's Hellcat. Karate. Hey, Jeff. Are you still frozen in Canada? New trucks equal new builds and sell said trucks for more viewers too. Yeah, that's I'm telling you. I I really want to buy some new trucks. That's my plan coming this next year. If this channel keeps growing the way it's growing, I'll pay off a bunch of debt and then I'll buy a new truck. That's kind of what the plan is. Still more sell, more glad your roof shells. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, oh, and yeah, the Tesla stock price. Holy crap, that stock price is m massive. Uh, did not buy this. Yeah, Ford's stock price has been stuck in a toilet for a long time. Oh, they set up. Hey, thanks, Jeff. A lot of work. Love New York. York. I love New York City. <laughs> The, the thing with the Javits uh, Convention Center is it's uh, downtown, downtown Manhattan, and it's really expensive to go. The hotel rooms are insanely priced, and for the hotel room I had one year was smaller than my office. It just was so tiny. And, uh, yeah, I just – the people, and they put the trucks down in the basement, and it just – that's why I don't understand a Durango in New York City. Like, it's just – I don't know. That's crazy. Grand Cherokee and Durango are essentially the same thing. Why did it take so long for it to get here? Um, I don't know. I don't know. FCA is busy working with Pago on how they're going to merge. I don't know. They got other stuff going on. They're making money. They're not making that much money, though. It looks like the uh, prices are not uh, crazy. My watch is like, it's time to stand, fat ass. Um, anyways. But th it seems like that's the way it's going to be. Uh, warmed up. Well, the grant. Okay, Brandon, Tim. What are your three least favorite truck YouTube channels? Ooh. Ooh, that's like dirt talking. Yeah, he's trying to get me in trouble. I gotta. I get. Uh. Get me in trouble. <laughs> I don't know if I should answer that. I have some answers for you. I, I have some criticisms. Would you like to hear my criticisms? Rant of the day, friendly fight. I offer you cheers with Gentleman Jack. Hey, David, I offer you cheers with uh, some bird dog. Would you like... I, I have some 
criticism. Do you like hear my criticism? I'm not going to say least favorite. I'll tell you criticisms. How's that? I will, I will do criticisms. I'm not going to do um, least favorite. I didn't think about that one. I feel like most of the big three are starting to almost price themselves out with new trucks. Almost have to get just a work truck or something with very few options to get somewhat good pricing. Kyle, did you see my um, XLT STX? Is it STX or XXT? Whatever the hell they call it. You see that review I did on that, that truck I got from a dealer? Um, it's like, was the entry level truck? Um, yeah, they all want criticism. I, did you see that video? That did pretty well. And I think that truck's with incentives is probably right at 40 or less than 40. And that's a crew cab truck. So I think that's, I, I thought that was good. I, I'm glad I went and got that truck to drive. I need to reach out to the dealer. I have his card and follow up with him because I got 20 some thousand views. And he said I can come back to the dealership and get any truck I want off the lot. So I'm going to do the Ford. I'm going to talk to the Ram guys, the Chevy guys, kind of break down the boards. Um, break down the doors. The doors. And get more. Let's hear the criticism. My One of my biggest criticisms of the truck YouTube channels and the automotive YouTube channels, I guess overall, I should say automotive overall, is um, you wonder about whether they even like trucks and wonder where the passion is. Like, I just, it's hard for me always to see the passion and uh, on certain channels, I get tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. I just get bored of that. It's like, let's take this truck and do this thing. Let's take this truck and do this thing. It's, it's, it, they're trying to be scientific testing. And the reality is, is it's so hard to do scientific testing. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't know anybody that I know of that makes a big hill of beans about one or two mile per gallon. I think some of these channels make a big deal about that. I don't think that that's that big of a deal. Um, I get tired of the guys that always call them Dodges because they think it's funny. They always call them Ferds because they think it's funny. I think that's kind of, it's just boring to me. Um, I get tired of some of the guys I know that aren't truck guys that review a truck and they don't, they don't talk about the truck. They talk about weird stuff in the truck. I think it's very clear to me on YouTube and very clear elsewhere you guys see it too are the guys that don't that aren't truck guys look i'm a truck guy i'm a passionate truck guy fault me if you will i don't know how fast 911 goes i really don't give a crap i i don't know what the most popular i i oh hell i can't even say jaguar correctly or porsche i have no idea how to say those damn things i i i don't, I don't care at the bmw x3 outside and people would just go over the moon to drive this thing. And I'm like, hey, my golf clothes fit and the seats are kind of annoying. But that's who I am. I, I don't I don't get away from that. I feel like sometimes there are guys that get away from that. I just be yourself. That's my biggest one of my biggest criticisms. Um, I get frustrated by some people who don't take it seriously um, in, in the YouTube space. Like I take it seriously. Like I I watch videos on how to YouTube all the time, thumbnails, how to get your attention, how to do good videos. I'm always, my voice, my speech, um, my titles, my topics, I'm always trying to get better. And I feel like there's some guys that have gotten so big, they just mail it in. Oh, we're going to talk about this. I'll just film it and put it on YouTube and make a bunch of money. That's frustrating for guys like me who are really trying to build a community and to have that happen. Um, that's very frustrating to me. But yeah, I, I, I just, I get overly frustrated in that kind of stuff and I just wish that I wish there was more passionate truck guys on YouTube overall who just, if they had a choice between a 911 and an F-150 Lariat, I wish they'd choose the Lariat. I would choose a Lariat all day long. And I don't know if there's more guys that would do that. That's kind of my rant. I see Chevy Custom compared to the STX. I would like to, uh, yeah, I need to make uh, friends with the Chevy dealership. Tim, you think Car Wild YouTube channel drag races is rigged? I, I don't understand drag races and trucks. I guess people click on that stuff. I just don't see it. It was a really nice truck. Now I would love to see a video from from you to go and compare a Lariat to that truck. Oh. Yeah, I, Lariat, Lariat, I could do more. It's more or less. I need to make that sure that dealer... I need to reach out to that dealer. 
yeah, Heavy Duty, he's supposed to get the new uh, Tremor in there in different configurations. What I love about the dealership is that um, I'm testing out stuff he's selling. I'm not testing out stuff that manufacturers want me want to sell. I think that's a very important dis difference. And so I think it's going to be really interesting. Skip and Jenny Fies comment. You just write Ford stock is what? Yeah, it's stock, Ford stock price is terrible. You say hi to Scotty Kilmer on the show. <laughs> that was a funny story. My friend uh, Sean came up to me and he's like, "Dude, he's right over here." And I'm like, who? And the guy you don't like. And I'm like, "What do you mean, the guy I don't like?" I said. It, Kind of a few enemies out there, if you don't know. And I was kind of like, who? And so he tells me, Scotty. So we went and tracked him down, and we could see him. And this guy is like, I thought he was on crack or something. He's just, blah, over here, blah, over here. That's how he's talking. He's got this weird hat on, and he's just mouthing off in the air. Like, he talked, like, I would, uh, so it'd be like, the phone is a person. Be looking at, I, I believe in making eye contact with the person you talk to. Not this guy. He's like, blah, 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 the whole time. And so we're like, all right, we need to track this guy down. I want to, I want to say, I'm gonna get a photo. Well, that I went to front of that car and I said, just take a photo. I still want to get near this guy any closer because I just, he's just weird. He's just a weird guy. And I thought I don't want to get any closer to him because I got weird vibes coming from this guy, and I don't want to say anything incorrectly, and I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy. I said, just take a photo. It's harmless. No one's gonna get in trouble for this. And so my friend Sean's got my phone. He's literally got my phone, got me into the image, and we're waiting and going back and forth. He's like waiting and waiting. And I'm like, dude, what's wrong? He goes, he keeps bobbing his head. He keeps going up and down, bob up, down, and down, moving around. And so he ran another car, and we had to move and keep getting the shot. So he finally got the photo, but that photo was a ton of work because he won't stand still. He was just the whole time, and you could see him look in the car, and he'd like notice like that Toyota. He'd like look at the cup holder or something and go ah. Typical Toyota and walk off. Like it just reaffirmed everything that his bad thoughts had been for years. He reaffirmed it at the show. Which I thought was just bizarre. He wasn't trying to learn something new. He wasn't trying to learn something. He never made any press conferences. Ignored them all. And only talked to the stand-up people in the um, in the booth who really don't know anything. They're, they're not really PR people. They're just kind of – they have they're, they're young kids – they get a sheet of paper about the car, and that's what they know. But he treats them as PR professionals, which just, he's way off the mark on that. And so I thought it was really interesting that he ignored all of us, never came to lunch, never did breakfast, ignored all the press conferences, mouthed off to the PR people like weird, like he was just a weird old guy, guy, and then ran off. He ran through the whole show that way. And I thought, if that's somebody you guys are listening to that you has new car information, Wow. I, I don't know, man. It was just weird. It was bizarre. It, it was just, wow, it was just crazy. That guy, I, that guy, I should have, I should have cornered him a little bit and just, boy, I should have talked to him a little bit because he just, I, I swear to God, he was on meth. It just was crazy. Um, all right. I'm sorry. I kind of went off. Uh, the, 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 so what are you saying? The, the Lambo SUV test to handle? 100 miles an hour, okay. I'm a truck guy in Shelby GT500 Mercedes guys. Great. Juan, I just, I love trucks. Somebody give me some X3, I'd have a feel good. It's just a weird vehicle. It's very strange. I'm not really a truck guy so much as I have to drive the darn things for a living. I'm a general gearhead though. I think a lot of guys are that way though. I mean, guys like cars and like trucks, but I just I just prefer a truck. I like the seating position. I like the power. I know my guys, I, I got into a heated discussion with the ex-editor of Car and Driver I bought went to blows, and uh, I get that the 911 is faster and all that kind of stuff, but I just I like the power of a truck. It sounds powerful. That's me, my thing. So my biggest thing with EVs is I don't want to be quiet. It's the last thing I want for my vehicle is quiet. Love Doug, but I hate when he talks trucks. Yeah, I have some concerns there, too. My uh, favorite half-ton. Uh, if I could do Ram Interior, the 3-liter Duramax from Chevy... The configurations of the Ford and the packaging of the Ford trucks combined with the reliability of the Tundra, I feel all over it. Let me instruct you to pretend to be wealthy and they are. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess. I choose a Platinum F-150. Yeah. Truck drag races are for quick bait. I don't understand it. I, I, I guess. I just don't understand it. Porsche Cayenne S for its CTS-6V. No the Porsche, even though it did everything pretty well. Huh. That's interesting. I, I wasn't. I was surprised with like Cayenne S. 
the pricing I was I sent one uh, a couple years ago, and I'm surprised the pricing was so low. I didn't think it would be that that. Uh, I mean, I, I thought it would be higher being a Porsche, and it wasn't that high. Oh, <laughs> did I rant? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, huge fan of Scotty. Um, love Scotty. Uh, I like he's he's weird. Um, it's interesting about Scotty coming. I would occasionally watch his views in the past. And he never acted like that. Somehow he learned how to make more YouTube money. Yeah, he, he's a very calm down on camera, but he's very much the same weirdo kind of guy. Two thousand ten ton limited. I bought used for six nine thousand Walmart. Oh. Stage eight iconic suspension magnetic charge supercharger. Well worth it. Wow, that's that's a cool truck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's his things he talks about. They're not from the brand. Those kids. Uh, Scotty is like Leroy Jenkins of Carry Tire Cart. Not useless. We have to be. Yeah, I, yeah. Exactly. Too big to fail. I don't understand that. Like the guy I was talking to, car and driver, was driving 140 miles an hour up here to Nebraska to see the eclipse. And I was like, "You are a freaking idiot. That is completely dangerous and uncalled for, and you should be going to prison." And he didn't like when I told him that. Um, face truck of the BMW you have. Yeah, I, that BMW is just weird. I, I don't understand BMW. Like, I just, I really struggle with their vehicles. I, I don't think I've found a BMW I've really liked yet. It's not, it's, it's that weird. I mean, BMW, like, people love these things, and I just, I struggle with these things. Use Nissan warranty with how many dealers are cut close. Ooh. Bring me a hat paid in Chicago. I, uh, I can't bring you a hat because they made one off. You gotta order more. I will, uh, if you guys want, um, Send me emails. I'm going to make another order, and I will send you. An, I will send you a hat when I can. Or uh, David, I can send you. The, I have the other hats. Send me what you want. I got other hats. Oh, I got one left of this hat. I got uno of this hat, and one of these, and this is the new one. So I don't have any surplus. They ordered a one off, so I can see if I liked it. And I can tell you what, I like it. This is what I look like in Chicago. <laughs> this is my outfit. <laughs> this is all I'm wearing. Damn, don't let me watch Channel True. Nissan dealers are not closing like the BMW with LS. Huh. Yeah, I don't understand BMW. Oh, goodness. It's been an hour. All right. I promise I'll only go an hour. I should get off this. Um, used to be good back in the day. Not anymore. All right, guys. I'm off to Chicago this week. I'm going to try to get some videos out. I'm doing my best. I got a lot of stuff going on. Bring it, bring this one. I will bring this other one. I will bring it with me. Uh, I got just, I got, I'll do my best. Just still here tomorrow. I'm going to do a lot of uh, stuff going on. So, hey, hey, go, logo needs to refresh. Somebody said that they wanted me to do this letters PTS, then talk. Yeah, I was trying to get the SUV in there. I'm not really sure how to do it any better. All right, Mark, if you got ideas, hit me up. Hit me up the ideas, Mark. I will, uh, I'll be open to them. I, I had to get the SUV in there and, if I make it taller, it gets weird. And so I'm playing around with that. Um, service, yeah. Now we talked about that. Chevy Swedes, my daily. It's my office. All right, cool. All right. All right, guys. Oh, I'm going to go uh, uh, take this hot shirt off and look at lighting on Amazon, maybe. But that's the thing. I will see you guys next week. Back from the Chicago Auto Show. I'll try to do a live stream from the Chicago Auto Show because that's always fun to do. Again, thanks for having... All you guys on tonight is phenomenal. I used to be on this with like one person, and you guys really uh, really helped out. So I really appreciate it. And uh, that's it for now from West Nebraska. Ta-ta. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you next week or whatever. We'll see you down the road.